All right, tonight I want to talk to you about when doubt sneaks in. When doubt sneaks in. And uh, let me give you the outline. It's kind of... uh, But we do have two. Number one, the doubting of John the Baptist. The doubting of John the Baptist. And number two, doubting Thomas. Doubting Thomas. You know, everyone has, has had moments of doubt in their life. We doubt about certain things we are praying about when we don't get an immediate answer. Sometimes we feel like we are not important to him or that he, ca- or that he cares for us because he might be doing bigger things. Great men of the Bible had their own doubts about God at some point in their lives. Moses, Elijah, Jeremiah, and even Paul uh, had their doubts and moments of despair. Many times we doubt when uh, we when we think over things. Uh, I think a lot of times overthinking brings doubt also. Uh, going left is so true in our lives. Let's look at these two doubters in the New Testament and in the life of Jesus. Luke chapter 7, verse 18. Then the disciples of John reported to him concerning all these things. And, and, <clears throat> excuse me. And again, uh, John was in prison at this time. And uh, he was in prison for uh, preaching the word of God. And we all remember. Jesus. He was a very popular preacher. Uh, He was a country preacher. Okay, he wasn't city-fied. He, you know, locusts and wild honey, you know, and even uh, with the way he was. Verse 19, and John, calling two of his disciples, said unto him, send them to Jesus, saying, are you the coming one or do we look for another? And I think what might have got to John was because, uh, you know, of him being a country person and being arrested. Uh, I had read this earlier this week that he had probably been in jail three to four months. And you understand somebody that's used to, uh, you know, preaching on kind of a circuit, traveling around and uh, you know, uh, he baptized, I mean, his name was John the Baptist. He baptized a lot of folks, uh, if you look at the Gospels. And so, you know, he wasn't able to do those things. He wasn't preaching in prison. Uh, he wasn't, you know, able to lead people to Christ and follow up in baptism. So I, I, I really think just kind of despair set in and talking about Jesus, he has come to set the captives free. And, you know, even in John's mind, he's thinking, doesn't Jesus know, you know, about this? You know, but yet here I am, you know, I, I have a gift, I have something, but uh, I'm sitting in this prison cell. And so he asked, and, and you notice the, the capitalization here, are you the coming one or do we look for Another. There's a couple of things that you could say there. He might have been asking, uh, folks, that's a lot of times when we doubt, okay? We, we doubt because something doesn't happen or something doesn't turn out the way we want it to turn out. And a lot of times, even in our, our, our praying, you know, we doubt him to do those things. He wasn't preaching in prison. Uh, he wasn't you know, able to lead people to Christ and follow up in baptism. So I, I, I really think just kind of despair set in and, and doubt started to creep into his life. Uh, you know, uh, you could think even of the Old Testament as one of the things uh, Jesus said, and it was talking about Jesus. He has come to set the captives free. And, you know, even in John's mind, he's thinking, doesn't Jesus know, you know, about this? You know, but yet here I am. You know, I, I have a gift, I have something, but uh, I'm sitting in this prison cell. And so he asked, and, and you notice the, the capitalization here, are you the coming one or do we look for 
another. There's a couple of things that you could say there. He might have been asking uh, himself, uh, where are you when I need you? And folks, that's a lot of times when we doubt, okay? We, we doubt because something doesn't happen or something doesn't turn out the way we want it to turn out. And a lot of times, even in our, our, our praying, you know, we doubt and we, we, we pray and we pray and we pray. And you just, you just, even in your heart of hearts, you may think, God's going to answer this. And for some reason, He doesn't. Okay? And folks, God knows a lot more than we do. Uh, so uh, John, sitting in prison, was definitely uh, doubting. Now look at verse 20. And when the men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent to you, saying, are you the coming one, or do we look for another? And obviously, these were two disciples of John, uh, and they knew what Jesus was doing, uh, because they, or John knew what Jesus was doing, because he kept in touch with these disciples and, and uh, knew what Jesus was up to. Verse 21, in that very hour... He cured uh, many of infirmities, afflictions, and evil spirits, and to many blind he gave sight. Now notice, it was interesting, he did these things before he said something. So in my mind, what I was thinking of when I was reading down through here, Jesus didn't answer the question right away. Okay, He didn't answer the question. He simply let them follow him around to see what was going on. And when you look at this, the word many cured many infirmities and afflictions and evil spirits. And to many blind, he, became, he gave sight. So going in and, and seeing this personally and, and seeing what Jesus was doing, I think really changed these guys' minds. Folks, even when we can't see it, Jesus and God is up to something, okay? And, and you, know, uh, you know, you think, you think of the time when uh, Jesus and, and Lazarus and that issue was going on. You know, he waited three or four days, okay? And even Mary and Martha said, you know, if you would have been here, uh, you know, Lazarus would still be alive. But Jesus has a purpose in all his delays Jesus has a purpose in everything he does. And then in verse 22, he answered and said to them, go and tell John the things that you have seen and heard, that the blind see, the lame walk, the leopards are cleansed, the deaf hear, and the dead are raised. The poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he who is not offended because of me. You notice how he added two what was going on. He had the first list there uh, in chapter 21. And then when he spoke to them personally, he gave the whole list. He, he's saying, all this is going on. And what was he saying? What was he saying to John and these men? This wouldn't go on. This wouldn't happen if I wasn't the chosen one. If I wasn't the Messiah. This would not be possible. And that's what he was saying. In verse 23, and blessed is he who is not offended because of me. And, you know, sometimes we just, in our lives, we don't understand what Jesus is up to. We don't understand that he sees the big picture, and a lot of times we see the little picture. But i tell you what else. Uh, verse there, John chapter 30. Hold your finger there and go to John 30. Excuse me, John 30. John 3.30. John 3, verse 30. One verse. He must increase, but I must decrease. What is he saying? Folks, it's never about us. And it's never about John the Baptist. And I've never, I never thought of this before until I studied this and I looked at this on Monday. What was happening? John was the forerunner of Jesus Christ. And he went out before him saying, hey, the Messiah's coming, the Messiah's coming. You need to listen. You need to listen to what I say. And many things happened. And he, he was that forerunner of Jesus Christ. And what did he do? He fulfilled that purpose. Okay, and I'm not saying 
Jesus locked them up. Okay, he got locked up because he stood up against the scribes and the Pharisees. He, he, you know, uh, he got locked up because he was preaching the gospel. But what I see here and what I'd never thought of was that his part in what he was uh, done, what he was destined to do, what he was called to do was about over. Why? Because Jesus was starting his ministry. And Jesus was doing these things. Okay? And so, you know, and I'm not saying that Jesus was putting them out to pasture or anything like that. But I'm simply, say, I'm simply saying that, you know, we, we do things for a time and a period, and then things change. It's, it's like changing churches or going to a different church. I mean, I, I still say, and Steve and I both want to stay here the rest of our lives, okay, the rest of our ministry. But if God wants to change that, then He changes it. If our, or my work is done here, then I, I must move on, you see? And that's what is going on. He was just saying, John, nothing has changed. You've done a great job. You've done wonderful, okay? But, hey, it's my turn. It's my time uh, to move in and, and do the ministry. Let's go back to verse 24 in Luke chapter 7, verse 24. And when the messengers of John had departed, he began to speak to the multitudes concerning John. And I thought in my own mind, why did he wait till they left? Okay, think, chew that one over just a little bit. Jesus waited till the messengers left, and he began to speak to the multitudes. And he said, what did, uh, what did you go out into the wilderness to see? And again, he's talking about John's ministry. Okay, it was locusts and wild honey. It was a country uh, ministry. And the reed shaken by the wind. And we know that wind and reeds, uh, that they're fragile, that if a wind, a good wind gets up, that they can break that. He's saying how strong uh, John the Baptist is. But what did you go out to see? A man clothed in soft garments? Okay. I mean, I'm just telling you, if an urban church went in and tried to see him, he, they would say, no, our people, not, it's not going to work. Okay. Uh, he's not going to wear Hawaiian shirts. Okay. He's not going to have uh, shoe, you know, leather shoes on like that. Okay, he's just saying John the Baptist has a ministry and he has a calling, and, and John did a great job at his calling. Indeed, those who are uh, gorgeously appear, uh, apparel and live in luxury are in the king's courts. But what did you go out and see? A prophet? Yes, I say you, and more than a prophet. And folks, that says a lot about what Jesus thinks of John the Baptist. I mean, you know, in the Old Testament, the prophets were all well respected. And basic, basically, Jesus is saying, I'm telling you, he is as good, if not better, than the prophets in the Old Testament. And that day, and you think of the scribes and the Pharisees, uh, that would go all over them. Verse 27, and this is he whom it is written, Behold, I send my messengers before your face, who will prepare your way uh, before you. And he's quoting Malachi 3.1, uh, which I think is a double, uh, double uh, reason here. He was talking about, I believe, John the Baptist and Jesus. So again, Jesus wasn't saying he is like me or equal with me or anything like that. He was just saying, I'm telling you, the guy was an awesome preacher. The guy was an awesome minister. And he had a ministry. And folks... I still say the bivocational pastors in these rural areas, okay, and, and, and it's hard. I can't imagine. Uh, Steve and I were talking about this the other day. Uh, I've been in the ministry 42 years, and I've been in full-time ministry. It's always been a full-time job with me. Scott and, you know, I, I, you know and, and uh, Marty, you know, being, you know, they have full-time jobs, but yet they find time for ministry. And I am telling you, I believe the rewards in heaven will be as much, if not more, because of these guys, all right, that take the extra time to do ministry where God called them to be ministers. And that's what Jesus was saying. He was just saying, listen, John the Baptist is an awesome minister. Then it says, verse 
28, and I, for I say unto you, among those born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. Okay? The other thing I thought of, why didn't Jesus say it in front of those folks? He didn't want John the Baptist to get a big head. All right? I mean, you, you just think about that. If Jesus said that about you, I mean, we'd, we'd be all, you know, like that. All right, but yet in front of this crowd, it says in front of a multitude, and you know the scribes and the Pharisees were there. I mean, I bet it flew all over them. But he who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. What is he talking about? All right, was he going back on what he was saying? He said, no. He said, and his point to me was what he was saying, it doesn't matter Whatever God's called you to do, whether little or small, you are great in the kingdom of God if you will be a servant. A servant. You see, you know, a lot of people want the limelight. A lot of people want, you know, even in the pastor, they, you know, it's just a, it's just a step up. You know, they go from church to church and they keep going up and up. And, and I know God's will is that in, in a lot of people. But folks... In some, it just gets to their head. The bigger the church gets, the bigger their head gets. All right? And he's simply saying, don't look at how many people you are preaching to. Don't look at how big a ministry you have. Are you exactly where God wants you to be? Matthew 23, 11. Just one verse there. Matthew 23, 11. I'll get there in a second. Matthew 23, 11 says, But he who is greatest among you shall be your servant. Now that's Jesus' words, folks. All right, we, a lot of times we, we look at greatness by numbers. And folks, I know numbers show that you're growing. Numbers are good. Numbers are people. Numbers are souls. But I'm telling you, if you are doing what God calls you to do, he says, being a servant is the greatest thing. And then verse 12, and whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. And folks, I'm telling you, I thank God for people like John the Baptist that in, in those biblical days, they didn't have the, you know, they didn't have to have a, a huge crowd following them. They didn't have to have the limelight. He just did his job. He just did his ministry. And Jesus called him one of the best servants and the best preachers that was ever born. Now, let's go to not only doubting of John the Baptist, but doubting Thomas. And uh, John chapter 20. John chapter 20. And this is after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And, you know, uh, all the, you know, several had already seen, Peter had seen, uh, Jesus, many of the disciples that aren't seen Jesus, Mary had seen Jesus, and for some reason, and you know, I don't know, sometimes when I study things, I just think, you know, why wasn't Thomas in on that? Where was Thomas in all that? I mean, up to this point, his name's not even mentioned there, okay? And two things come to my mind. Number one, he might have been hiding, okay? Because a lot of people get afraid when they started arresting people and, you know, doing all this thing, you know, and and, you know, it's, it's a trial and all that stuff was going on. And he, he just might have been, been fear, okay? And then the other thing is it would be the doubt part. You know, maybe he was let down. Maybe he thought, man, was, was that a scam? Is, is Jesus really who he says he, he is? Okay? One of those two things came to mind as I was uh, looking at this Scripture. But look at verse uh, 24, John 20. 24. Now Thomas called the, called the twin, one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. And again, I searched and searched about the twin and I could not find a name of who a twin, twin was. But folks, there's several things in the Bible I can't answer, okay? Uh, but he had obviously had a tw twin, but he was not present uh, when Jesus came uh, to the disciples. And the other disciples therefore said to him, we have seen the Lord. Okay, and I, I think sometimes when we go to stuff like that, they were even saying it in a kind of a proud way, okay? 
And we saw him and you didn't see him. So he said to them, and this is Thomas's words, unless I see uh, in his hand the prints of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and put my hand into his side, his side I will not believe. And this, this really struck me is the words that he said, unless I see it, okay? Unless my finger is put there. He twice used I and twice used my, which he was just saying, I don't believe you guys, okay? Not that you're lying, but I just don't believe you. And I got to looking at this, and I thought about doubt versus unbelief, okay? There is a difference between doubt and unbelief. Doubt says, I cannot believe it, okay, or I just, I just don't believe it. That's doubt. Unbelief says, I will not believe it, okay? And man, there is a huge difference between those two things. And then he said in verse 26, and after eight days, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them, and Jesus came, and the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace unto you. Well, folks, Jesus can do what he wants to. He don't have to go through a door. He can go through a wall. He, he, man, he's Jesus, okay? This is post-resurrection. He is Jesus, all right? And, and he simply said, Peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, notice he didn't address the group as a whole, all right? He said to Thomas, Reach your finger in here and look at my hands and reach your hand here and put it into my side do not be unbelieving but believing i bet at that time a light went on in thomas's head why because what was jesus doing jesus was, was telling thomas exactly what he said when jesus was not in the room okay and that's, that is so important, folks. Uh, you know, anybody can say, I believe, okay? But, but just saying it doesn't make it so, all right? And, and Jesus was teaching him a lesson, all right? Verse 28, and Thomas answered and said unto him, my Lord and my God. And, you know, Thomas got the name from this scripture, right here. That's where, I mean, his nickname is Doubting Thomas. Okay, and folks, we label people a lot of times by, by their actions and by their words. I mean, when, you, when I say Rahab, what do you think? Rahab the harlot. Okay, and, but yet, you know, she was, she, she helped save the spies. She, you know, she, you know, did good things for our Lord and Savior. And so, Basically, he was saying, anybody can say, I believe, but do you truly believe? Because think of the word believe, folks. By live. Believing means I'm living out what I believe. That's why even in the early church, I know they were called Christians later on, but even, uh, you, know, you know, believers, I, I like the word believer. Okay, and using that as, as Christians. Because we believe. What do we believe? That Jesus Christ is the Son of God. What do we believe? That, that uh, Jesus was born of a virgin. What do we believe? He lived for 33 perfect years. What do we believe? He died and He rose again. Folks, what you believe is everything. And even in our world today, I mean, there are so many skeptics even in our Southern Baptist Convention, you know, you know, people are, are doubting our doctrine and doubting the Word of God. People are changing things, okay? And, and folks, doctrine is everything. And Jesus is simply before He's going saying, Thomas, you must believe. Don't doubt me. Don't doubt who I am and what I'm about. I'm going to leave you. And this was... I mean, just post-resurrection, folks, he, he, he wasn't there 40 days. And, and he's just saying, 
you know, I've got this long to straighten Thomas out. And, and he was one of the disciples, but he had those doubts in his mind. But I love the phrase, my Lord and my God. It's kind of like Peter when, when Jesus asked the other disciples, who do people say that I am? And that light went on in Peter's head. Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. I know me personally, folks, I've staked my life on that, that doctrine of belief. I've spent 42 years, and I, I'm not trying to brag on me, I'm simply saying, folks, I believe. What we believe is so, so important. And then verse 29, and Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed or happy are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Something that uh, stuck out even today uh, when I was looking this over and I was just thinking to myself, you know what? I've never seen Jesus. I, you know, I've never seen the Holy Spirit. I've never seen God. Yet, I believe. You think about that, folks. All that. And I know the skeptics, the, the lost folks, the people that don't come to church, that don't think about God, that don't give God the time of day. They don't believe because they haven't seen. But yet, folks, I have seen God's works many, many times. I believe Jesus, and I believe the Word of God, and I believe every miracle that it says in the Bible Jesus done. And I know the Holy Spirit is real. The Holy Spirit is in my life. The Holy Spirit helps me pray. The Holy Spirit helps me believe. So yet, even when we can't see God working, folks, and, and I heard this phrase, when you can't see God's hand, Trust his heart. Trust that he's doing what's best for you. Trust that he's up to something. I believe with all my heart, God is always up to something. And just because it's not in our box, we all have boxes, folks. We all have boxes. Everybody has a box, and we want that box, you know, to be not perfect, but you know, and, and we even, I believe this with all my heart, we tell God what God's will is for our lives. And what our will is, a lot of times, is not the same as God's will. But don't doubt God. I can make this statement, and I believe it with all my heart, God has never let you down. He's never walked away from you. He's never told you a lie. He doesn't do everything we want and, and I understand we question things. That's, that's human nature. But I'm telling you, keep believing. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Look at Mark 9, verse 23 and 24. And again, you know, the man comes to Jesus and or were first the disciples and said, you know, my son, uh, there's something wrong with him. He has some kind of spirit inside of him. Uh, he, he just uh, throws himself down. He has these spells. And uh, even, you know, the, the disciples couldn't cast them out. And this man just says, Jesus, what's going on? What's, what's the deal? What's going on here? And if you look, look down, Jesus says in verse 23 unto him, if you believe... All things are possible to him who believes. Folks, do we really believe that? Do we really believe that? I'm going to read it again. If you can believe. Folks, he's talking about faith. It's not the amount of your faith. If I can work up enough faith, he's going to answer my prayer. No, folks, he always answers our prayers, but it may not be what we think it needs to be. If you can believe, all things are possible to him believes. And then verse 20, 24, immediately the father of the child cried and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help me with my unbelief. Folks, just stay strong in what you believe. Folks, 
other verses that come into mind with God, all things are possible. All things are possible. Never give up. Never doubt God's power. Never doubt God's love. God's love. Hebrews 11, 6, and I know you know this verse, but let's, let, let me just read it for you. Hebrews eleven six. 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please Him. It just said possible earlier. All right? It is, everything is possible. But He's saying, but without faith, it is impossible to please Him. What is the opposite of doubt? The opposite of doubt is faith, folks. Faith is the key. For he who comes to God must believe. Folks, I can't tell you how important it is to have faith in God. Not in your own ability. Not in, you know, I don't believe in chance, happenstance. I don't believe in luck. All right? I don't believe in all. I don't believe any of that. I believe in the power of God in our lives. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. That he is what? He is God. He can do anything. All right? And he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Folks, faith is the key. It's the key to prayer. Faith is the key to divine appointments. Faith is the key to sharing the gospel. Faith is the key in our Christian lives. Then 2 Corinthians 4. And I close with this, 2 Corinthians 4. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7. The Bible says, But we have this treasure in earthly vessels, that the excellence of the power of God, it may be of the power of God and not of us. And folks, I think when we, just like John in his situation, and Thomas and him, and I think when we, come into persecution, when we come into times of things not going our way, that's when the doubt sets in. Okay, And I'm telling you folks, uh, this persecution is going to be a real deal. The longer we live on this earth, it, I, I just believe with all my heart, it's really going to start costing us something to be a Christian if God tarries. But we have this treasure in earthly vessels that the excellence of the power uh, may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body uh, the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our bodies. Why do bad things happen to good people? so that people can see that our reliance is on the Word of God. And our reliance is upon God. Okay? We need God. It doesn't matter what happens in our lives. We need God. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us, but life in you. And folks, I'm just telling you, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, I have no idea how I'm going to die. You know, I've always had kind of a suspicion that once you have cancer, you always have cancer, and that's how, but I, that's just me talking. But it doesn't matter, folks. It doesn't matter. Uh, no matter what happens to you, no matter what happens in your life, folks, I'm telling you, God is up to something. God has a purpose. God has a plan. He has a plan. And even though a lot of times it's not our plan, man, don't doubt God. Don't doubt His power. Have faith, man. Serve Him up to your last breath. So people, and, and folks, I believe this with all my heart, God gives people dying grace. Dying grace. You can see it. I mean, think of Stephen. Being stoned for what he believed. Being stoned for sharing the gospel. But yet, his face glowed and he was like Jesus in the most trying moment in his life. And I pray that it would be so in our lives. Keep believing. Keep trusting. God and Jesus 
and the Holy Spirit are always up to something. Father, thank you. Thank you that uh, just the human nature that we have, God, we've all had doubts in our lives. We've all had prayers unanswered. We've all had situations we don't understand. But God, I pray that our faith would stay strong. God, I thank you for men like John the Baptist. Man, he just, I mean, he was a fire and brimstone. <laughs> you know, he just told the truth. He just told it like it was. And God, I thank you for his ministry. And I thank you for even doubting Thomas. And God, I thank you that uh, you really uh, showed him a lesson. And the disciples there also learned a lesson. Lord, we can't see faith. But God, we can exercise faith. We can't see the Holy Spirit, but we can depend on the Holy Spirit. And God, I pray in those bleakest moments, in those times of despairs, those times when we're crying out to you and not understanding, God, I pray that our faith would be strong. God, I just know we have evidence of things like that. Lord, I, I still, and, and I've replayed in my mind several times, of Missy and Landon losing Leighton, Lord. And their faith has been so strong for so many years. Lord, they helped build a ministry. They, you know, by raising money physically, helped uh, parents that are grieving. And so, God, I pray that all of our faith would be that strong. And God, the neat thing about all that is they're going to see her again, and we're going to see those we've lost again. God, it will be the happiest days of our lives. Even today, as we buried Aura, Lord, I just, in my mind, I was just sitting there thinking, man, she is thinking, uh, she is kicking up gold dust. Her and Dave are just hugging one another. And God, it was, it was just a glorious reunion. So God, help our faith to be strong. And God, in practice, you know, we can sit here and we can read the Bible. But God, we've got to put it into practice. And I pray we never give up. I pray we never quit. I pray we never throw in the towel. But we just keep trusting you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We thank you for joining us this evening at Rye Hill Baptist Church. And may God richly bless you.